What's going on everybody? It's Wade with Swamp Donkey Archery. So I got a new video for you today. The one I want to do today is with it getting really close to deer season at the time I'm making this video, I kind of want to go over some, what do you need to look at? You first open your case and you pulled your bow out to get it ready for the season. So that's something you're interested in? Stick around. That's what we're going to get. All right, how are you fine folks doing today? Hope everybody's doing good. So as I mentioned in the intro, I want to go over what some of the things you need to check out on your bow before you start your uh, start your bow season out. Before I get into it too far, go ahead and uh, like this video if you don't mind, so my channel hadn't already done it. Uh, as I mentioned in a previous video, um, I'm going to do a dozen era giveaway when we hit 2,500 subs. So if you hadn't subbed, go ahead and sub. That way we can get that uh, dozen errors given away. So like I said, getting into it's before hunting season, you open your case and you get your bow out. What do you need to be looking at on it to make sure that, it, that it's good to go? And when, when is it okay? And when do you need to take it somewhere to have it? looked at taken care of so i'm going to do the first half of this video um like for your typical everyday guy that doesn't have a press and stuff like that in his shop this is stuff we can look at and if this is good then you carry on if uh if it's past this point take it to the shop so getting into it so you oh i'm trying to figure out which bow i want to use here so if you open your case and you pull it out, what's the first thing I'm going to look at? So this is my personal bow, brand new. Um, there's not going to be anything wrong with it, but I'm going to show you what I do when I pull it out of the case. So I'm going to pull it out. First thing I'm going to look at, just visual, is everything still there? Does something look like it's broken? Um, next thing I'm going to look at, I'm going to look at the strings on it. Uh, what kind of shape are the strings in? Are they a little fuzzy? Do they have broken strands? There's a big difference in between just being fuzzy and broken strands. So I want to show you with this one right here, if the camera will focus on it. So if you can see, these are a little fuzzy right here. Fuzzy's okay. You can get another year out of these strings if you want to. Just wax them, unless you have a set of my strings, which are waxless, by the way. Um, you can wax them good to go uh, speaking of waxing don't don't wax your serving only wax the string material okay now on this side of serving i want you to look at something you see how the serving starting to separate and this is going to start separating where it hits a, a hard bend around one of these cam tracks right here when your serving start separating as long as it's just starting I would recommend taking it to a shop and having them reserve that before it actually gets into your string material. If it gets into your string material and starts booging your actual string material up, it's going to start causing you some issues then. Now, talking about broken strands, if you look at it, and it's obviously strand, strand broke. There's a piece sticking out here and a piece sticking out here. It's obviously it's broke. You'll hear some people say, oh, it's only one strand of string. It's okay. What y'all got to realize, these strings are what you call an endless loop. It is one, one piece of string that is looped all the way around and then served and built. So if you have one strand that's broke, in essence, that string is broken. The only thing holding it together is just the amount of twists and the amount of uh, serving that's on it. So if you see a broke strand, I don't care how good the rest of your string is, you really need to go get it looked at. And the most common place you'll see that is right here around the peak site. If the peak was not installed correctly, you'll see a strand broke right here. Or the next most common thing I see is somebody getting excited, pulling their broadhead out, and then they put it on the string and a broadhead next their string. And that will slice through a couple of strands. That is a definite need for replacement right there. So, like I said, first thing I look at is anything obviously broken. What do the strings look like? I look at the limbs, make sure the limbs look okay. You want to make sure that you don't see any delamination or any splintering or anything like that. And you don't want your, your uh, limbs to give out on you. If you see any splintering or uh, anything like that on your limbs, take it to your local shop. Let them check it out, okay? 
because uh, if the if the, the these limbs are made by made with multiple layers of uh, fiberglass, and if they start delaminating or separating, that is getting real close to a catastrophic failure, and you do not want one of these to bust the limbs when you're um, when you have it have it going. Um, most common places you need to look are usually on the underside of the limb right here, maybe down closer to the limb rocker pocket right there on this right here. Make sure that's good to go. If you got a drop away rest, make sure that your cable is still in your cable here. Make sure it hadn't got pulled out. Um, just a good quick look over on your bow. Make sure all your uh, screws and everything's on is tight. I always take it and give it a little bump. You can hear a little buzz. Well, let me get close to here. Let's see. We can find where it's at. I can hear a little buzz on this, which tells me something is loose somewhere. Just give it a little bump. Check all your uh, Allen screws, everything on it, the, on your uh, mods, on your cam, on your, uh, on your rest, on your sight. Check everything. Go over it. Make sure that's good. Uh, that's a big thing there is uh, making sure all your screws are, uh, are tight. And that's, uh, that's something a lot of people don't think about. Look at your, if the main part of your string looks good, make sure you look at your D-loop right here. Uh, this D-loop actually is not in too bad a shape. You can see it's starting to fray a little bit right here. Uh, you want to make sure your D-loop is in good shape and you want to make sure you're serving in between the D-loop looks good as well. If you see your serving starting to separate or wear out in between it, and you want to make sure that it that the fitment of it's correct, when you put your uh, air on there, you should feel your air a click or snap whenever it snaps into place on your string right there. If you're not feeling that, you might want to go get your center serving replaced. Uh, looking at your arrows is another big thing, especially if you have them uh, in a case. Oh, I want to see if I got one over here that's kind of bent down. If you have it in a in a case, here we go. This is a good example right here. You have you have your arrows just laying in the case. You see how that fletching's bent over like that right there? I personally don't like seeing that. A lot of people rock it and they'll shoot it. I'll replace that. I, I don't like bent fletchings. They cause excess noise and it can affect your air flight, especially further down range. So check your fletchings. Make sure if the fletchings are more than you know four or five years old, give them a good little, good little bend. A lot of times uh, fletchings will start getting old, and they'll either uh, try to break. I've actually seen some of the older ones break, and uh, kind of give them a little tug. Make sure they're still glued on your shaft, really good. Um, Look at your inserts, make sure, especially if you shot a lot, make sure your inserts aren't coming out of your shaft. Uh, that's another good thing to check. So that's all the basic things to look at. Uh, you want to make sure that your bow, this is something you can do at home with somebody helping you. Want to make sure that your bow is still in time. Most bows are going to have, unless it's a single cam, most bows are going to have some type of cable stop or limb stop on them to where when you draw back if it's a cable stop this cable stop should hit your cable and your top one and your bottom one should hit your cable at the same time or should hit your limb at the same time boom you can have somebody standing there looking as you're drawing back and make sure that they both hit whether it's a limb stop or cable stop make sure they both hit at the same time if they're not you have one hitting before the other one that means your bow is out of timing um, if you have a press and you're willing to go for it, that's when you put it in the press. And most of the time, your one of your cables has crept or stretched. Um, so you would want to add a twist to whichever one you need to correct that. I got a video on how to correct your time and I'll post a link to it uh, up there. So get somebody to look at it when you draw back and hit. Make sure they're both hitting in the same spot. Um, if you make you a paper tuning jig, you can shoot it through paper and kind of see what your air is doing, especially if you had it tuned before season last year. You might want to just shoot it through paper, make sure it's still good. 
you can build a uh, paper tuning jig real easy. You can you can make a temporary one. Uh, shooting through paper is not the end all be all of tuning, but paper gives you a lot of information. Now, when it comes to bow tuning versus hand grip and all that, got another video on that. I'll post a link to it as well. But check your timing. Make sure your timing's good. If you have paper, shoot it through paper. Now, if you don't have that, this is where we can get into taking it to a shop. So you looked at everything, everything looks all right, take it in the shop, just tell them, hey, I, I just want to tune up. Most of the time, a good bow technician is going to take it. First thing they're going to do, they're going to inspect everything as well, what I just went over. And then they're going to uh, put it on your draw board. They're going to check timing. They're going to set your timing where it needs to be. They're going to check. This is something else that you can do at the house, but you don't have anything to do to correct it. I kind of ain't a reason to do it. So you can see what factory specs says your bow is. Axle to axle and brace height. If you check your axle to axle and it's supposed to be a 33 inch axle to axle bow and it's 33 and a quarter, you definitely know your strings and cables have crept and you need to take that and have your bow put back in spec. So that's one thing that, uh, that a good bow technician will do. They'll take it, put it in spec, make sure it's timed right, and then we'll shoot it through the paper. Um, as I mentioned in one of those videos before, a bow technician can shoot it through paper and get it tuned correctly. And then another person, uh, the owner of the bow can come shoot it and it may do something totally different. But like I said in the video, that could be a difference in grip, face pressure and all that. And that gives the uh, gives a, a good bow technician an opportunity to look and maybe give them some helpful points of advice. So um if it's an older bow i would suggest if it's over 10 years old and <laughs> you still have the factory strings on it bubble well, go ahead and get them replaced okay um strings will allow a good quality set of strings will last a good while especially if you keep it in a case keep dust off of it and sunshine if you can keep dust sunshine and heat off of your bow that is the best thing to do uh the worst thing you can do to a bow is hang it in your garage out in the wide open in the heat is getting dust on it it's getting heat on it it's uh it's going to it's going to deteriorate your strings very quickly especially down here in the in the south where it gets in excess of 100 to 105 that is not good on your limbs as well if all possible put it in the case keep it in a climate controlled room okay um, so like I said, if you don't have it in a, in a case, in a climate controlled room, those times drop tremendously. Okay. Um, like I said, uh, so take it to the shop. They're going to check it out. If it needs new strings, they'll suggest new strings, get your new strings on it. And most shops like me, what I do, if the boat, this is something else I was going to mention, if it's over 10 years old or so, uh, I'll do a kind of revitalizing it whatever you want to call it i'll pull axles out i'll grease axles i'll pull the limb take strings cables everything off of it i'm going to re-grease your uh, limb pockets your your um where your screws go through for your limb adjustment and all that i'm going to put new grease and all that new grease on axles clean everything up soapy water and a toothbrush can do a lot for cleaning up these bows you don't need any harsh clean cleaners or anything uh, cams, man, especially my hardcore bow hunting guys. I love it when I see a bow come in here and there's mud caked in the cams and in the axles or uh, in the uh, limb pockets and all. I know that those bows have been utilized to the best of their ability. So soapy water and a toothbrush can take care of a lot of that. That's what I do. If I get a bow in here, like I said, 10, 15 years old, everything comes off of it. I break it all the way down, clean everything grease it put it back together and the bow functions really well so um guess that's about it oh releases that's one thing a lot of people don't think about put you a drop of oil in the jaws of your release uh make sure it's freed up really good it has a leather uh, band if it's an index make sure your leather or uh whatever your uh, wrist straps made out of make sure that's still in good shape make sure you don't see any of the um uh uh 
where they sewed everything together. Make sure you don't see none of the threads starting to uh, starting to break, come apart. Um, releases are fairly inexpensive, so don't uh, don't sacrifice your hunt to a uh, to a junky release. Uh, I guess that's it. Went over what did it look at your errors. Um, something odd you might want to look at um, your fibers going through your pins. You want to make sure your fibers are not broken. You can look where your fiber comes on the back side of your pen and then goes through. Make sure the fibers ain't broken. That's not a game ender, but it's something that uh, gets in low light conditions. If you don't have your full length of uh, fibers, you're, uh, it's not going to gather as much light. Pen's not going to be quite as bright. So I'm just trying to think of anything else. Um, anything else. Like I said, if you got the uh, ability to paper tune it, paper tune it. Make sure that that your timing's good. Um, make sure nothing looks like it's broke or about to fall off. Like I said, uh, if a strand of string is broke, replace it. Okay, that's not that's not a battle you wanna you wanna worry about dealing with. You wanna go ahead and replace that. So I guess that's it. I uh, just wanted to go over kind of the main things that you need to look at and go for. There are several other small things. But that's the uh, big thing. Pull it out and look at it. And let's do this more than a week before uh, <laughs> before season opens, okay? Because most of the guys like me, when it gets to this time, July, August time frame, we start getting really busy. And the closer to deer season it gets, the longer our wait times are. So if you come to any of these uh, significant bow shops with a bow three days before hunting season because you just pulled it out and looked at it and you see your strings that need to be replaced. Chances of you getting that fixed in three or four days is very, very slim. Okay. So now's the time to be looking at it. Make sure everything's good. And uh, that way, if something is wrong, you have time to get it worked on, get it ordered, whatever you need. Go ahead and do it now. Don't wait. Don't delay. Okay. So anyhow, guess that's it. Uh, good luck this season. Hope everybody has a great uh, archery season this year. Uh, Y'all be safe out there. And like I said, hit me in them comments down there if you got any questions. Uh, if there's anything you think that you'd like to add, something extra that y'all look at on your bows that I may not have mentioned, go ahead and drop it in comments down there. Um, I guess other than that, uh, if y'all need to get in touch with me, go to my website, swampdonkeyarchery.com. It's got all my contact info there. It's got my cell, my location, Facebook, Instagram, all that stuff right there on my website. It's a good way to get in touch with me. So, anyhow, I guess that's it. And uh, I will catch y'all on the next one. Y'all have a good one.